John. Thank you so much for the time. It is a joy to speak to you. Thank you. Um, and it's a joy to be back at Fraggle Rock. Uh, Yay! This, this show is so special in so many ways. I mean, this is a show that has been around for forever, and Apple has given it new life. Yes. Uh, to, the, to the three of you, what in your mind is the magic of, fragile, of Fraggle Rock? Not Fragile Rock, Fraggle Rock. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Check did that. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I think the magic is, my gosh, there's so many things to think about, but I, I feel like it's the characters first and foremost. It You know, these are real characters and they feel real because they are allowed to not be perfect and they have different layers and they have different strengths and weaknesses and arguments and disagreements and points of view and so many different, you know, it's, that makes it feel real and that makes it feel relatable. Um, and I think that the, the character work and the care that the original series and we've tried to bring to the reboot, you know, we're so careful with how we treat these characters and what we have them say and what they do. So I think that's, that's my answer, I think. My answer would be that it's just what you said, the magic of Fraggle Rock. The magic and the idea that you create this reality that just beyond this little hole in the wall, you as a little kid or a big kid could travel down into this magical world that's connected to our world, that's teaching us about our world, is so special, but also such a strong fantasy world. The original series created the foundation for like it, the Gorgs, the Doozers, all the Fraggles, all the background characters, all the like thinking that went behind it. We inherited on the show this incredible lore and then we were able to plus it and go deeper and explore more places in Fraggle Rock, meet different kinds of Fraggles, and season one, the Craggles, season two, the Lost Fraggles. So I, I just think that the magic of it is a solid, strong, gorgeous oh. fantasy world like no other. I think, I think you know, it's, 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 it's puppets. It's the Jim Henson Company. There's nothing else like this on TV. The care and the artistry and the love that goes into it, the the comedy and the music and it's all it's all real you know it's not it's yeah. all practically done there's there's special effects that touch it up a little bit but everything we do is puppeteers one beneath it sometimes two on yeah. each end yeah. and it has to be done practically and and you can feel that you can feel that uh, I think that's the magic. The craftsmanship. The craftsmanship. Yeah. yeah, we love figuring out how to actually do it real in the camera. You know, it's it's always a fun challenge to be like, we could totally do this in the mm -hmm. camera, make it happen real. I've been asked like, oh, the you know the, those digital sets. Uh, did you do that against green screen? I was like, that is an. Act. We are actually built those sets. We're in Fraggle Rock. That's real water. Those puppeteers are in scuba gear. So you know, it 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 is um it is a feat to bring that world about. Okay, I'm sorry. Hey, did you say that your puppeteers are in scuba gear? Yeah. Oh, I. Oh, yeah. I, it, it, in the first season, when you see Gobo or Red in the pond, <laughs> I got in a full, you know, diver suit and got in. There was the pond is a real pond. It's about eight feet deep, and I got in there, and and Karen got in there with Red, and we were our arms. We were leaning out a shot this deep in the water, and and it was like no, because. You, you know, you can see, you can always tell when you watch things if it really was happening or not. And I think that the audience, at least for me, when I was a kid watching the original series, I was like, those puppets are in the water. How do they do that? Where are the puppeteers? Like, my brain went bonkers. <laughs> you know, even as a child with this show, I, I was obsessed with Jim Henson's Creature Shop. Always. Yeah. It's just, you're, you're absolutely right. There's such a magic to that just seeing these things uh, seeing the the puppets come to life or the the characters i've heard you don't call them puppets on set i don't know if that's the case with the fraggles well, we're, not. Pretty, we're not too precious but i mean it's hard to think of this puppet you're like wait they feel so real right right so, we call, yeah definitely even like all the behind the scenes the cameramen everyone are like they, they they're calling out to go yeah they're yeah, not yeah. Saying, uh, <laughs> yeah where's the puppet we have relationships like with all the crew members through our characters and it's really it, that's really fun <laughs> But the stories, the characters, they truly come to life. Yeah. And one of the things I noted uh, in watching with the new season and, and with last year as well, you're dealing with some complicated issues for a children's show. And I was wondering, you know, uh, what what was that like? What is it like? Is it difficult to balance these these challenging issues uh, and and reach kids at the same time of a certain age? 
I, I mean, that's that's kind of the the opportunity and the responsibility that we have, right? I mean, and and what's so great about Fraggle Rock and always always has been is that it's always a metaphor. You know, it's not it's not climate change. It's about uh, you know, there's there's wind storms going on that are caused by Doc's experiments up there. So. There's, there's an ability to keep it light and fun, but also really get to the heart of the matter that I think, again, is kind of the magic of, of this world uh, of other creatures. And, and also, I think it's, you know, always keeping that layer of how would the Fraggles look at something. You know, their world is, is so uh, fueled by joy and silliness. You know, I, I, I was just talking about, you know, one of the uh, episodes from the original series, there was this, this <laughs> fraggle war between these two groups of fraggles over the most ridiculous thing. And they solved it because one fraggle got smacked in the face with a banana cream pie and everyone started laughing. And they're like, laughter is what unites us. And it, you know, and it's, it's such a, I remember watching that as a kid and not realizing, oh, this is a story about the Cold War, basically. But then it was like, as an adult, I'm like, that's how you do it, you know, because that's how you get everyone invested. And it's not heavy handed, you know, it's it's not here's the lesson you're learning. It's just telling it that feel, in a way that feels true to the characters. You're absolutely right. And I think it's even in this season, Gobo, I think it's Gobo, uh, makes a comment, just says, I don't know. Yes. The yeah. hour of I don't know. And I remember thinking, this is it's profound if you're five or six years old. This is actually a very deep meaning message moment to be like, you don't have to be the one that's, you know, because Uncle Traveling Matt does the adventure, but you can say that you don't know and there's power in that. It's it's really incredible. I remember performing uh, that line on set and I, I was very moved by it because I realized I think also parents in this time of actual climate change, in this time of a very unpredictable world, you know, kids look to parents to always have the answers. And there's something very powerful for a parent to be able to say to a kid, I don't know, but if we're together, we're gonna get through it. You know, that message, I mean, I think for all of us, we all felt like that was such an important thing to give to parents too. Yeah, we work with a lot of advisors. Um, and uh, that was, I love that you picked that up. That was from one of our, our children's advisors saying he can express and just say he doesn't know. It's okay. And so to get that permission from somebody that works with kids and knowing that's the right message and then translating to the fragile language. Um, so glad that you picked that yeah, up. Yeah, what, what an important message for adults to hear, like even more than kids. You know, I think that as adults, Everyone has to feels like they have to be an expert or have the answer on mm -hmm. something, and there's nothing more respectable than being like, you know what, I don't know, but let's stick together and try and figure it out the yeah. best we can. You know, uh, Matt, you said a you said something there that I think is really important to this series, and that's feel, mm -hmm. because feelings, I I really get the sense that has always been important to the Fraggles. And even the fra the main fraggles themselves, each of them sort of carries a different feeling with them. They're they're all different personality types. And I know we're starting to run out of time, but before we go, I thought I would put it to all three of you: Is there a fraggle that you relate to the most? And if so, which one? Mm. You know, I think that, like you said, they are they are they are feelings in a way, and so in a way, there's pieces of each of them I find in me. Like I, there's the, there's the uh, potential to be, you know, pessimistic or dreadful like Boober. There's the, pes there's the opportunity to be kind of uh, silly and indecisive like Wembley. Sometimes you have to step up and be a leader like Gobo. Sometimes you want to look at things kind of spiritually like Moki. Sometimes you're just competitive like Red. Uh, so, and then sometimes you just kind of feel like do, uh, sprocket actually like you're just like <laughs> I just want to play so I don't know I don't think yeah I think for me Moki the most um, the definite earth mother uh, very uh, spiritual and uh, but at the same time she's very decisive you know and she she can dig her heels in and she's a real mama bear so I love Moki so much as the frazzle but my favorite my favorite character I relate to the most is Marjorie trashy. You Johnny? <laughs> I think honestly now playing Gobo it's Gobo. I think I think mm. uh, because the the role I take on the show both as Gobo and behind the scenes is in, is in some sort of leadership and some sort of, you know, guide to the puppeteers. I'm the leader of the puppeteers. And sometimes I don't know. And sometimes, you know, like like Gobo, I get very insecure about not having the answers. And I think I learned this season from that episode saying that 
that power that, you know, sometimes it's okay to not be answered. So I think I've learned more how to be a better person from playing Go Ball, Aww. truly. I love that. And I, honestly, I love speaking with you all. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Aww. And the series is wonderful. I wish you the best. Have a Thank great you. day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.